is going on, Dodger Nation? Today, we are joined by one of our favorite, probably sports people ever, I think, in uh, the opinion of you and me. You've seen him on your TVs for the better part of three decades, not to age you too much there, Carl. Sorry about that. Uh, as an anchor on ESPN, he's the voice of Sunday Night Baseball, along with guys like Eduardo Perez, David Cohn, uh, also our friend, very close friend of the show, Buster, only Buster. over there, too. And of course, you can see him this Sunday with your Los Angeles Dodgers taking on the Chicago Cubs over at Wrigley. Should be a lot of fun. We are excited to welcome Carl Ravage to the show. Ravi, how you doing? I am I am old and I am great to be on with you guys. It's I've learned over the years if you surround yourself with younger people, it helps keep you young. So that's why we're doing this. There you go. I like that a lot. Put that on a t-shirt. There it is. And and, and everybody in baseball just keeps staying young. So that's a great sport to be covering. That's right. Happy you're covering uh, covering baseball, putting baseball in everybody's ear holes on, on Sunday Night Baseball uh, this season and going forward. You guys are covering the Dodgers this week. First time getting some eyes on them. What are your uh, thoughts coming out of the gate on uh, really seeing them for the first time this year? And just what are your thoughts on, on these 2022 Dodgers? Well, I, there's not a lot of difference between the 2022 Dodgers and the 21 Dodgers and the 20 Dodgers um, I, I guess the early impressions of this season is already their separation between what I think are great teams and then everybody else. And the Dodgers and the Mets uh, are probably two of those teams that are currently great teams. And then you have teams like, like the Braves and the Yankees who borderline great, the Blue Jays borderline. But I mean, the, the Dodgers and Mets – and I know they're playing the Giants, and the Giants won 107 last year, and, and the Giants may be, may be there again this year. But uh, I see separation um, with those two huge spending teams, Los Angeles and New York, and then there's everybody else. And we all know in baseball, everybody else can win a series. Everyone else can win a World Series. But those are, those are the two best teams for me in baseball. Yeah, already an embarrassment of riches out west in L.A. But then the Dodgers go out and do something wild. They had Freddie Freeman, uh, you know, right after the lockout, which was a lot of fun. I'm sure you enjoyed that very much. But adding in Freddie Freeman, I mean, the conversation immediately shifted to, is this the best lineup baseball has ever seen? And of course, right. you can argue one way or another. At the end of the day, end of the day, they still have to perform. But have you ever seen a lineup that shapes out like this and the potential that they could actually have? Um. No, it's just hard for these lineups to all produce at the same time. Um, Mookie Betts, when he was with the Red Sox, currently isn't the same Mookie Betts that he's that he's shown with the Dodgers. That Bellinger isn't the MVP that he was. But you can dream on Mookie Betts finding it again. You can dream on Bellinger's start carrying for the entire season. You can dream on Trey Turner doing what he did. You can dream on Freddie Freeman. The, the point is you can dream on all of them. I mean, this is – this is Ocean's 8, 11, 12, and 13. That's the A-list group of, of actors you have, you know, in Los Angeles. And they've done an unbelievable job of whenever, I mean, think about owning a home and all of a sudden you realize like that, that faucet is, is dripping, but it drips every hour. Well, mm -hmm. when they have a little drip, they address it immediately. And yeah. they address it with, with something that lasts, you know, for a long time and it's of high quality. They yeah, don't you, necessarily run to Home Depot and slap some spackle on it. They figure out what the best option is. Yeah, they lose a left-handed bat, the caliber of Corey Seager, and they go out and get Freddie Freeman. That's uh, that's pretty right. damn impressive. And, you know, it didn't really destroy the bank, but we know Guggenheim just uh, prints money. So Dodger fans are very blessed here in, in L.A. Um Another Dodger note, uh, we just saw Clayton Kershaw become the greatest strikeout king in Dodgers franchise history. I just want to get a little thought from you on, on Kershaw, uh, having seen him covered him for you know, all of his career. Um, will baseball fans ever see another pitcher, another person like Clayton Kershaw? Well, you know, I'm glad you, I'm glad you put person in there. You know, th <laughs> this, is a, this is a generation where the microscope is – is on so many players and generally they they'll take a misstep. Uh, he doesn't. And that's, uh, that's kind of a remarkable part about what he's been able to do in a huge city um, between his workout regimen, between his relationship with his, with his own family, between with his consistency on the mound, between his ability to, to be accountable uh, and to not be perfect. You know, I mean, as a pitcher, he, he hasn't always been perfect. There's been injuries. It, it hasn't all been smooth. And yet, you know, I, I really felt that watching him set that record and the appreciation from the crowd there and the fact that we weren't exactly sure if he was going to come back um, with the Dodgers and the Rangers were kind of hovering out there, <laughs> that it, 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 you know, I hope it cements in so many people's minds how great 
uh, a pitcher and an ambassador he is for the game. There, mm. There's never, to me, there's never been another one like him. Um, he's just, he's unique in every way. And there are certain dudes that, that just fit the uniform in the city. Like, I, I know he's, he's, a, he's a Texas guy, but I, when I think L.A., I think the, the long hair, I think short hair. He just looks good in a uniform. Like, movie actor, you need a picture. Clayton Kershaw is that guy, and he's, uh, you know, he's, like I said, he's an A-lister. It's a good point. I mean, when you talk about the quality uh, caliber of pitcher that he is and the, you kind of forget like, Hey man, he's been doing this for so long. The spotlight's been on him for so long and there hasn't been, and a he's mystery. had a change. Yeah. You know, yeah. He, 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 and, the, and the great ones do. I mean, Greg Maddox had to change. Right. Clayton Kershaw's had to change in order to last as long as they do and yet achieve success at the, at the tail end of their, of their uh, longevity. Well, you got to figure stuff out and mm-hmm. yep. figure stuff out. Yeah, I think we're on year 10 of him developing that changeup. So, you know, things, it's really going well. That's, my, that's always my favorite storyline of spring training every single year. It's like the changeup is back. We're doing it again. But Carl, Dodgers and Cubs this weekend, obviously a historic matchup. It's a fun one. I'm actually going to be there out there at Wrigley. I'm very excited for that. It's the first time I've ever been to Wrigley. I'll be his fan. So I'll have, right? to, I'll have to go back and actually watch the actual broadcast because I do enjoy the ESPN broadcasts very much. Is there a particular part of this matchup between the Cubs and Dodgers that you're look, looking forward to seeing? Well, I mean, unfortunately, the Cubs are not who they were. You know, right. we, we don't have we don't have Bryant, we don't have Baez, and we don't have uh, Rizzo. So they're very different. They're definitely going through a transition. I think I was reading an article. The last time the Dodgers sucked was like 2005. Um, you know, they they're good every year since then. I think they've what been been way above 500 since 2010. Like collective every year. Uh, the Cubs are the Cubs are going to go through some real, you know, real tough times here, and I, I think they're probably at the trading deadline this year going to move players. Um, I, I know in our meeting there were people who were genuinely excited about Seiya Suzuki. Mm-hmm. Where would Seiya Suzuki, with all due respect to him, rank on the Dodgers, <laughs> the Dodgers team? That that just yeah. So uh, I'm excited about the front of the uniforms, Dodgers, Cubs. Like you mm-hmm. said, it's historic. Um, you know, when you think about, uh, ballparks, it's always something special about Wrigley at night. It's an unbelievable fan base, uh, but this is, this is, a, this is an MCAT. This is an LSAT. This is the toughest test you can take as far as a uh, team in baseball goes. And, um, you know, Stroman, I think is going to pitch for Chicago. He's coming off a really good start, likes to keep the ball on the ground. Uh, but there's a chance Walker Bueller ends up facing him. And that's just another reminder, like Stroman's our best guy. And they have Bueller, and they have Orias, who is great, and they have Kershaw. Like there's, there's just a fundamental difference. So I'll go, I'll go. A, you're going to be there, and then I'll go Wrigley, and then I'll go front of the uniform. That's what I get excited about. I yeah. like it. Yeah, that's yeah. good. I like that everything answer. about it is, is marquee and it's going to be fun and it's going to be fun hearing you guys in the booth. Uh, you got the call. You you guys uh, saved the world for a little bit there, bringing baseball in into our homes, albeit at an ungodly hour overnight. Uh, <laughs> I know what not, time was that time was that L.A. time? I got I was uh, getting up at two. I, you probably weren't even going to bed yet. It, it was much. for us. That's that's a nightmare uh, time. You know, that's like, OK, well, I guess we're in like the 12th inning of a uh, extra inning ball game or whatever but still we we thank you guys even going through through so many of the technical issues and all of that but one of the things i wanted to ask you about is just um you know the relationship particularly with you and eduardo perez like how far you guys have come from those first games and just battling through all that to now you know you guys got the prime time spot and, and it's you know this is the game for everybody it's not even just for baseball fans it might be for new fans fair weather fans just you know talk on the relationship and and you know what it means to to you and you guys to be doing this well, I mean, it, it's an honor. I mean, I, and I know people say that about whatever endeavor they're doing, especially if they love it. It's an honor to be sitting there. Um, it's more enjoyable sitting next to a friend, and he certainly is that. Um, and and Cone is is phenomenal, and we knew that sort of in the off season. If we could get him, it would be great. I mean, he's he's sort of that hybrid guy who is very funny. He's got all sorts of experience, tremendous credibility, and he's embraced analytics. I mean, he's. He's that guy that if he were 26 again, he'd figure this stuff out on the mound so quickly because he's a sponge. Mm-hmm. And there's a few of those in baseball. You can see, especially middle relievers, guys that are young, 25, 26, who are taking this information. They're big, strong dudes. They had two pitches like Clayton Kershaw's worked on his changeup. 
So you look in New York and this kid, Michael King, he's got five pitches. I mean, he had two, you know, when he started, he's got five and they're all great. His ERA is like, oh, 60. Cohn would have been that guy. So he's a, he's a huge asset. Um, but to your point, I'll be honest, when we started KBO, we were all, we were all feeling like, thank God we can do something. We, you know, we'll, we'll get up in the middle of the night. At least we're doing something. And, it, and it's what we love. Um, I think that, I think that humanized uh, us a lot. I think people appreciated, we didn't know what, who we were talking about. We didn't know what we were really talking about. We had no idea who these people were. I made a funny story about the first KBO game we ever did. Um, it starts at 525 AM, which is a bizarre time. Every game starts either on the half hour or on the hour. So we're, we're supposed to go on at 525 AM East coast time. And at about 520, I get a producer in my ear saying, the, the game between Samsung and Kia is rained out. So we're going to do the game uh, instead between the NC Dinos and whoever. And I said to myself, I'm dead. I I'm screwed. What do you mean we're going <laughs> to – we're just going to switch games? I, I don't even know the players on the teams we're supposed to call. Now you want <laughs> – so, so I went into the other room where I had a printer, woke up my whole house, was printing off the – rosters and i'm walking back into my room thinking you know i still have time it's 5 30 start and all of a sudden in my in my ear i hear eduardo perez say welcome to the kbo our maiden voyage i wasn't even in my seat when the first kbo game happened because i was trying to find some darn rosters of teams <laughs> i knew nothing about so that you talk about technical stuff that was that's an example of of what we did i mean we don't do we don't go to wrigley field and if the dodgers game gets rained out three minutes beforehand, we're going to go call the Royals Red Sox. Doesn't happen. Now. Right. Yeah. It does in the KBO. <laughs> well, you're a better man than me. Cause I would have definitely been like, well, the first baseman's batting now. So here we go. Let's see what happens. Here's You're on the floor. Exactly. Fetal yeah. position. This guy is clearly number 11 and he hits right handed. Speaking, so. You're right. speaking the language of baseball though. And, and you, you guys do it well. Um, you, you guys have also been blessed to uh, hear baseball players speaking the language of baseball mic'd up. It's been fun. Who we've had so far. We have, uh, we've had Joey, Votto, Kike Hernandez, Ozzy Albies, Bryce Harper, and of course, Francisco Lindor handed it off to Justin Turner this week. How fun is that? That's just, it's a great, it feels like such a great addition to these broadcasts. Well, it's been huge. In fact, your guy Mookie Betts a couple of springs ago uh, wore a microphone <laughs> and springs different. And he, you know, he was talking with me and Kirkshin and he said, uh, it's a ball over my head. I ain't going to get that one fellas. <laughs> yeah. That resonated with, that resonated with everybody. So um, it's not a new concept. It, it, it's an interesting one because there are times in the middle of a real major league game, you're wondering like, are we, are we violating airspace here? Like how, how right. much do we want to get into this? And Lindor had a hard hit ball right in the middle of a kind of a question answer thing right at him. Um, and we're, you know, we'll, we'll stop talking, but, mm -hmm. but you realize like, please make, you know, please make the play, make it clean, get the double play because you, yeah, you're, you're kind of on thin ice. If all of a sudden it bounces off his glove. A, he's going to be upset. The millions of Met fans are going to be like, what the heck are you doing? Leave him alone. So um, yeah, it, it's, it, it's a work in progress. The, the players are, are all about it. This, this doesn't work without mm -hmm. them. And yeah, you, you know, you, you get lucky if a ball is hit to Kike Hernandez or Francisco Lindor, Joey Votto, Joey Votto can do whatever he wants. He can be a comedian. He can be an analyst. He can, he can do anything he wants. He's really funny. He was perfect for it. He's in, he had some idle time at first base, um, but it's, it's, it's been great. And, uh, you know, in some cases less, maybe more as opposed to more, maybe more. Hmm. So we're, we're, it's a balancing act. We're, we're working on it, but they, they have been unbelievable. Yeah. You talk about, you know, just like in pure entertainment value. I mean, just, Base level, pure entertainment value. If you want to bring in new fans, you want to bring in people who want to watch the game, this yeah. is exactly the kind of thing that they yep. need. I mean, it's at the yeah. most basic level. It's like, hey, this guy's playing. Get to know him while he's playing. I think mm -hmm. it's a really fun feature. Uh, some old baseball heads might disagree, and that's okay. We, we still respect exactly. them. But uh, I, I think, for me, it's I, mean, I think the thing that I've heard, um, guys, is, is from people who would watch the game say that someone else in the room – is now watching the game because are they actually talking to that guy on the field? So right. whether it's a, a kid, a wife, a husband, a father, they, they'll, they'll actually be like, is that, are they talking to each other in the middle of a game? So there is that, that part of this, which is, which is unique and it is different. And again, you're right. The, the only way to sell 
the game to a new group is to expose the people that are playing it. And to their credit, they've been, they've been great about it. It's been wonderful. I just think about people like my mom walking into the room and being like, I would like to get to know that guy. He sounds cool. Right. Let's watch this game. So I think it's working. I think it's a really good thing that I think doing. about people like your mom as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you throwing that in for me guys. <laughs> Want to thank Carl Ravage for being here. Obviously, this Sunday, Dodgers Cubs for those in LA, 4 p.m. start time. Don't forget that you mm-hmm. got to not mix that up. Don't I miss also baseball. I also have to not mix that up. 7 p.m. Eastern time. Don't miss baseball tonight. Don't miss baseball tonight. Six uh, six o'clock Eastern, leading into the game. Yeah, let's go. That's right. It's gonna be great, Carl Ravage. We thank you for being here. Best of luck to you guys out there, and uh, you know, just ask JT some good questions. That's all. That's all we got for. I'll you. do my best. That's you have a good. question for me? Give me a question. Well, I'll Ooh. give you one question. I'll ask. Ooh, man. We need a JT. A good one. Hey, guys, you got an office uh, JT question over here for uh, in game? Favorite tacos. Favorite tacos around Dodger Stadium. There you that, go. Because that's going to help tacos. us. <laughs> that's your most LA question. And our boss man is going to love that. Favorite tacos. Brooke and Clint, you got it. And let's, uh, let's do this again around the All Star game. We can't wait for the Derby and be out in LA. That's going to be great. We appreciate you, Carl. Yeah.